Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to explain in a little more detail um, the, the kind of relationships between Facebook product listing ads, the Facebook catalog, the Facebook pixel, Shopify, Google Tag Manager, um, Google Shopping, and a whole load of other crap. It's, it's quite a complicated relationship, but... We'll, we'll try and explain it. So if I start with my Facebook business manager, I'm going to go to one of my feeds and I'm going to uh, see if I can find a product and show you some of the additional information uh, that is there for products. So if I go to product feeds, I'll explain some other bits and pieces uh, in a minute as to why some of the things are as they are. Uh, but the first thing you can see is I have, I have a whole lot of feeds here. Uh, some of them have got a few errors on or whatever, but most of them are okay. And the reason I have a lot of feeds is because the, the program that I use to create my Facebook product catalog is limited by number. And because I sell lingerie, which has a lot of variants, I'm up I'm up to five to 10,000 variants. So what I've done is I've broken it all down into individual products that are, that are kind of less than the the limit that's going to break the feed, and I think that's maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred, uh, but I wouldn't swear to that. Where, whereas a single feed for me would be sharp end of ten thousand with variance. So that's why I've got multiple feeds, and I'll show you how to do that in one second. But I'm going to pick uh, the Beauty Night feed at the bottom, and I'm going to have a look at the products that are in that feed, and I'm going to pick this one here. So there's a few things that, that I want to go through with you here. First of all, just the sheer volume of detail which is in there. So Facebook before, when you had the custom audience pixel, knows that somebody's looked at the product. Well, that's not true. It knows somebody's looked at a product, not, not the particular product, but it knows someone's viewed a product. It knows the purchase has been made, and it knows the value of that purchase because it's got a total. Um, and that's pretty much it. And, it and it stabs a guess at who you are based on your behavior and all the other things and your demographics but it has no idea what you've bought you know, it could be dumbbells, could be a wheelbarrow could be some fish, you, who knows but now with the, the catalog we've got a whole load of information about the product here which has come over and I'm hoping this explains why the Google shopping feed gets involved because a lot of this information comes from this the the GTIN, the Global Trade Identification Number, or the barcode is here. Um, the Google Shopping category is here. So now with regard to the product, Facebook better knows what this product is. And it can also compare it with other products from other feeds. So if a particular customer is buying lots of things in this category, for example, um, and your products are also in this category, that person is a better fit to display the ad to than somebody that isn't. Um, you know, it's got pricing information. If somebody's buying products for 30 quid, but they're not buying products for 500, you know, again, they're a better fit to your type of product. So uh, there's some sizing information here as well, UK 812. So a whole load of product-based knowledge comes on board for Facebook's Pixel that it didn't previously have. Knew you bought something, knew you looked at a product, had no idea what. Um and, it, and it, to be honest, it doesn't really know what your store sells because it doesn't know anything about the product, but, but now it does. Uh, an important thing at the top here is, is the ID. So I've got Shopify underscore and then a product ID. Now, I have switched variants off for a reason on my products. Um, and the reason is if, if I have a bra that is in you know, 20, 30 different sizes, 32A, 32B, 32C... I don't care about the size of the person. I just care about the fact that they've looked at that particular product. It's up to them to pick what size they want. But instead of me having a ton of variants, I've, I've just limited it to the product only with none of the variants. So when it does a retarget, um, what I'm getting is everybody who's looked at a particular bra, it will retarget, as opposed to everyone who's looked at a small, everyone who's looked at a medium, everyone's looked at a large, and it will try and retarget those individual variants so I'm lumping them all together I just want to retarget the product 
that should work better for me. Now this this product ID here, if you have variants switched on in your store um, and you allow those to come through, it will say Shopify underscore product ID underscore variant ID. So this is quite quite a key piece of information here because um, it's how Facebook marries up the product to what is in your store. So, so you're either going to use variant IDs or you're not going to use variant IDs. And in my case, I don't. So how does it get the catalog? Let, let's start with that. How does it actually get the catalog through into Facebook from Shopify? How does it create the catalog? So what you have to do is you have to create yourself a feed uh, and the, let's go and pick that Beauty Night feed again. And what I've done is I've limited it by collection because I wanted to to uh, break down uh, into smaller chunks my feeds. So if I go back into my store, and this is the app that I use. It's it's a free app by Flexify, Facebook product feed. Uh, you install it. It publishes the feed for you right here. Uh, and then you can select what you want to sync. I want to sync all products. Now what these guys are pretty crap at is is telling you how to do it. They don't really give you very clear instructions. Um, but if you click on the advanced instructions, which are hidden down here, and kind of written in pseudo developer pigeon English, which you have to work your way through to make some sense of. Um, I'd rather they just did it in, in stupid English, you know, click here, add that, that's it. But they don't. So buried in the settings um, are some little codes that are interesting for me is no variance is one that I'm going to use uh, and another one is you can you, you can specify the collection um, and that again that's buried here in, in little language that you can't really see but you can put question mark collection ID and then and and then some other field sets so I'll show you that in a second go back to my um, my business manager feed and edit the URL here you can see the feed that I put the URL of my feed is I have question mark collection ID equals and the ID of the collection and then and and I put no underscore variance at the end so I just get the product without the variant code um, so let's go back how we do that within um, Shopify so this this particular no, I'm getting lost now this particular one is beauty night which is the brand so if I go and find uh, my collections for Beauty Night, there's my collection. If I click on the collection, it shows you somewhere. Oh, I'm on a Mac. I hate Macs. Um, it shows you here the... ID of the collection. So if you go on a on a Windows PC, it just shows you. On a Mac, you have to click on this. So here we go. So here is uh, the ID of my collection. So I'm going to copy that. Go back over into Facebook to my URL. So I've got collection ID equals, and I'm going to paste that collection number, and then I'm going to add on the end of it and no variance. So I just get the product ID. So what that will then pull over for me uh, in my collection. Oh, this gets complicated. Even, you know, even I can't keep up with it. Let's go back to my product feed, and I pick my Beauty Night feed, and then I pick my products. So first of all, it will only pull over things that are in this collection. So you can see all the Beauty Night, Beauty Night, Beauty Night, Beauty Night, Beauty Night. So it's just pulled that collection ID. And if I click on the product, I've got Shopify underscore and the product ID with no variant ID on the end. If you if you remove no variant, you get another underscore, and you'll also get the variant ID. So that's how we get the um, products into our Facebook catalog. And that's half of the battle. So now we have our products in Facebook, but we can't retarget because we're not telling Facebook what people are looking at. So we have to go back into Shopify and go to settings, and I'll start with checkout because that's that's the easiest one to understand. So normally within checkout, we'll have some extra scripts here. So I've got my if first time accessed and um, my Facebook script down here. It's my Facebook pixel code. 
Now what I've done is I've added additional code in. So as well as telling Facebook the purchase, subtotal price, money without currency and all that bollocks, I've added some additional stuff in to tell it the product that has been bought as well. So I've told it the order number. I've got a little loop in here which is basically a four next loop that counts up the number of items in the order and goes through each item and passes um, the product ID of, of the line item as well. So if they order one thing, it passes one thing. If they order 10 things, it passes the product ID of all 10 items that are on that cart through to Facebook. So you can see I've, I've put a bit of liquid in here, which is um, line item product ID. So, which is the line item of uh, the checkout. So if there's one, two, three, four, five items in the checkout, it's it's whichever one of those it is. And the product ID is just the product ID without the variant ID. Okay, and this needs to marry up to what is in Facebook here. So it knows which product has been bought compared to which product is in the catalogue. Or in the case of a view view content or an add to cart or something like that, it knows what you've viewed or it knows what you've added to cart. So this needs to marry up exactly with this. Now you can see this has Shopify underscore in front of it. That's ball out. So what I've got to do is, back here in my code, I've got to put Shopify underscore and then the line item product ID. So it should say Shopify underscore and then the line item product ID. So now the information that Shopify is passing with the pixel, uh, you also need to put content type as products. That's, that's a mandatory thing for Facebook for the... Um, add to cart, view content, and check out. Uh, so it now passes the additional information that Facebook wants. Facebook can marry that up to what you've looked at or what you've bought in the um, catalog, and it can then bang ads out to people that have looked at those things. So how cool is that? Um, but with all this additional information, we've got a whole lot of targeting going on that we didn't have before. It could be people have looked at this item on somebody else's store. So somebody else that sells your products, they've looked at this. Facebook knows it now and it can retarget them your product, assuming that other person's not re using retargeting ads. Um, there's a whole load of good things going on here that, that weren't there before. Now, I, in my checkout, I also include things that have been sold because I want Facebook to build up a picture with its custom audience pixel over time. I want it to know what I'm selling most of. So in theory, it will learn over time what my best selling products are and it will target based on you know that, that knowledge that people are buying this. So I'm going to dish up ads for this because they're more likely to buy it. Um, I use Google Tag Manager, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because you also need this script for your view content and add to carts, and they're the ones you really want to retarget on. Um, so I've got some good stuff going on with um, my purchase, not so much with my add to carts at the moment. And the reason for that is uh, it's very difficult to pass this information into Google Tag Manager. So I'll warn you now, I'm going to get a bit technical and talk about GTM for those of you that are more technical. Uh, so you can't pass liquid, or you can't use liquid variables in Google Tag Manager because they don't exist. They only exist in Shopify. So what I've what I'm working on now is just declaring those variables in JavaScript. Um, so I'm going to, in my GTM code, have a little bit of code that says um, the JavaScript variable equals the liquid variable. So that's declared in JavaScript, and then I can go ahead and pass that JavaScript variable over to Google Tag Manager, and I can um, include those fields in Google Tag Manager. And the one that you actually want, in fact, the only one you actually want in GTM is this this one, content IDs, um, and you need to make that variable line item product ID. Or if you're using variants, that needs to be line item variant ID. So variant would be the red one in small or whatever your variant is. Um, I'm going to go over to GTM real quick to just show you what I've done in Tag Manager so far for anybody that's interested in that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 
so let's go ahead and sign into Google Tag Manager. And I'll pick uh, my UK store and I'll go to my tags. Now what I've done is I'll show you the product tag which I've edited uh, slightly already. So where I had a Facebook track and view content event, I've now added in content type product which is needed content type product is needed for Facebook retarget. Now I, I've manually coded that because it's always product, it's never anything other than product. So I've been able to manually code that in here. But what I can't do at this point is pass this liquid because the liquid is not available in GTN. So that's the next stage for me which I'm working on today is to um, have a little bit of JavaScript that uh, declares that as a JavaScript variable. I can then pass that in the data layer over to GTM, um, declare it as a variable here, and put it put it in here to actually pass the uh, the correct variable over to Facebook. Job done. Um, and all we'll have there in our Shopify side is a single line of code in my theme, which basically says include Google hyphen tag, um, and then a little bit of um, a, a snippet of code which is the Google tag and the the JavaScript code real easy to do I, I got, can't say how much I love Google Tag Manager but that's what's missing at, at this point in time um, so there you go so that's that's the product catalog that's how to marry up the variables that are needed um, and how to get the feed URL and how to have no variance or variance uh, and all that's needed now if we go back to skipping around a bit here. If I go back to my business manager, we'll f see a few errors that I'm getting on my feeds. It's saying uh, it's missing content type parameter 91% of the time. And the reason is I've only just added into Google Tag Manager the, the content type product parameter. I only did that this morning. So a lot of them will be missing until that um, works its way through. So then it'll be in there 100% of the time. The only other thing that I'm missing is the um, the content IDs, and that's the bit that I need to pass with JavaScript. So when that's done, and Facebook's happy that it's seeing everything that it, it wants to see, uh, away we go. I've also broken my feeds down into product sets. So while I've got the feeds set by manufacturer, uh, by brand basically, and broken them down into bite-sized chunks, I also wanted to put it into kind of collections for want of a better word, so nightwear, stockings, hold-ups. So these might span a number of manufacturers and a number of feeds, but I made little groups from that. And again, my reasoning for that is I think Facebook is going to learn that if people look at a number of products, they also appear in the nightwear collection. So if you're looking at nighties across different manufacturers, they will all appear in this collection. So it's more inclined to dish ads for nightwear if that's what you're looking at. Um, so again, it's the, these I don't really think are going to do anything other than help Facebook dial in the pixel to what people are looking at and dish up more targeted adverts. So that's quite a long one for today. Um, the next day or so, I should have that JavaScript code done uh, so Google Tag Manager will work properly. Uh, and then you know we're, we're good to go. So we'll put it into practice and we'll see what happens. Um, I'm also a firm believer that things like Retarget app um, are, are going to be nowhere near as good as this. Nowhere near. Because it doesn't have all of that additional information available. And it also has a second set of pixels. Um, and that pixel is going to be used across lots of people's stores. Not just your store. It's going to be used across a whole load of stores. And then they're going to dish um, adverts up by URL based on that pixel activity. So it will be quite generic pixel learning, whereas what you've got here is razor sharp pixel learning based on your pixel, your store, your history, your sales. Um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, it's going to be really exciting, so I can't wait to keep you up to date with, uh, with how I get on.